Good morning. I'm glad you can devote some time to worship this weekend, and I hope this finds you doing well. We do have a few announcements as we uh, celebrate Palm Sunday, as we begin the events of Holy Week. We are celebrating those events uh, here at the Shelbina Methodist Church this uh, Thursday. We're going to be gathering for a meal. On the Last Supper, it seems very fitting to gather for a meal, and we'll be gathering for a corned beef meal. It's the last meal we had together as a church back in March of 2020, and we'll, we'll gather to have it again. And, and I'll have some food for, uh, my, I think I'm gonna do pulled pork for those who don't enjoy corned beef. Um, so I'll make sure everyone has something to eat there. So we'll, we'll gather at six o'clock in the evening uh, we're going to be over at the fellowship hall. We'll be outside to enjoy the weather if it's uh, nice out. If it's not, we'll go ahead and be inside. Then on Good Friday, we'll be here in the sanctuary at 6. Then on Easter, uh, Easter Sunday, next Sunday, we will celebrate. Uh, the weather looks good, so we'll be outside in the parking lot, 11 a.m., and that way you just bring some lawn chairs and you'll be able to uh, enjoy worship and not have to worry about masks and just enjoy uh, worshiping together. I'm lo looking forward to that greatly, actually. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to announce, and so here's the reading out of Matthew 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I would like you to imagine with me what it would be like for a town to get really excited about the upcoming Super Bowl, which obviously the Chiefs are going to play in, and packing up, gathering in the city center and all packing up and, and heading off to Kansas City to tailgate together as an entire town. Now imagine a little bit further that it's not just the Super Bowl that's gonna be uh, played, but imagine that it's all the games of the playoffs played right there in Arrowhead Stadium, and we're just gonna go down, and we're gonna camp out, we're gonna tailgate, we're just gonna make a big time of it, and just imagine the sea of red jerseys and smoked and barbecued meat as far as you can see. I'm getting a little bit hungry just thinking about it. I want you to think about and capture that sense of what that excitement would be like to be part of that, because we're going to need to understand that in a minute as we start thinking through what Palm Sunday would have been like. We're not going to dive, because we're not, but we're not going to dive right into Palm Sunday. We kind of got to get a running start at it. So we're going to back up. Palm Sunday happens in Matthew 21. We're going to back up to Matthew 17. In Matthew 17, we read that Jesus gathers with others in Galilee. Right? And so that's Matthew 17, 22. And then in Matthew 19, after Jesus teaches those he is gathered with in Matthew 17. So 17, he gathers. 18, he's teaching. In Matthew 19, it tells us that he leaves with a gathered crowd and they're headed towards Jerusalem. And so what's happening here? It is kind of like what I just asked you to imagine. An entire community has gathered together and they're going off to the Super Bowl. Except here, it's the Passover. 
This entire town, this entire community of the Jews of Galilee have gathered together, Matthew 17, 22, they've gathered together and Jesus is teaching them and explaining who, who he is. And, and we're all, we're all going to head off and here we go. And, and they, they take off and they're going up to Jerusalem on this week-long journey. It takes about a week to go by, by foot. And that makes sense of like, as they're taking off in Matthew 18, we get this moment where uh, Jesus is asked about paying the temple tax. Why does that come up then? It comes up then because when you go up to Jerusalem for the Passover, you, you go up to Jerusalem. Uh, it's, uh, Jerusalem is elevated. Uh, so you, as you're going up to Jerusalem, uh, you're singing the Psalms of David, and you're going to bring the, your, your payment, your tax, the temple tax. And so if you want to travel safely, you travel in a large group. And so that's why it came up, like Jesus was asked, so are, are you going to pay the temple tax? Ah, oh, yes, let's talk about that. And, and so the entire community of Jews of Galilee are heading on up to Jerusalem. Now, this is where the analogy of heading to the, the Super Bowl break, breaks down, because if I was to drive to the Arrowhead Stadium, I could be there three hours tops. They didn't drive. Right, as they're going to the Passover in Jerusalem, it's going to be five to seven days of walking. It's going to take a while for them to get there. But what that means is as they go, Jesus is explaining to them, as we hear in Matthew 19 and 20, that Jesus continues to teach, right? Jesus is explaining to them who he is. And so what the, the Jews of Galilee know is that a son of David is traveling up to the city of David. Uh, David had been the one to conquer the city of Jerusalem and use it as the capital of his newly created uh, kingdom of, of Israel. Uh, God had put together all the 12 tribes and David's the king. Jerusalem is now the capital. And this is like the, the, a shining moment in Jewish history. This is the moment when God has blessed the, the promised land and brought them all together. And so here we have the son of David heading up to David's city on the holiest day of the year for Passover. And they're singing the Psalms of David. David had given them songs to sing that are recorded in what we now know as the Psalms. And so they're, they're headed up, they're singing David's songs, and, and here they go. And by the time they get to Jerusalem, after a week of singing the songs of David and following the son of David, like, they're just excited. Like, they're keyed up. They're ready for some football, right, to continue to push that analogy probably too far. But uh, they are rolling in, and they're proclaiming Jesus to be the son of David. And, and as, they're, as we get to Matthew 21, and they're, they're needing something to cheer with, so they're reaching off, and they're tearing off palm branches, and they're waving palm branches, like uh, sort of party favors or like things to wait, cheer on your team. Like, they they just are making a big deal of this. And, and Jesus is right riding into the city on a donkey. And what they knew then and what we know today is the way that King David had marked his successor, who, the guy, who, his son, Solomon, who was to follow King David, is he sent Solomon down into Jerusalem on a donkey. And so now we have this happening again. Another son of David is going to Jerusalem on a donkey. So like this is just clear as can be that this is going to be a big deal. And so Jesus is riding into Jerusalem and they are singing Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they ride into town. And we get to the last two verses of what we read today in Matthew 21. We read that the city stirred. And you, I read the city stirred, and it's kind of like stirring after you've been asleep for a while. You kind of stir and you go, huh? Someone's trying to get your attention. What? What? Right? So this, we read the city stirs. It's like the city kind of looks over and realizes these folks are coming. And, and the city asks, we, we read, it's in Matthew, like Matthew 21, like, who, who is this? What, what's going on? And, and the, the people of, of, of the, the Jews of Galilee who are coming in, like, they're excited. They're going, yes, the son of David, it's Jesus. And they're excited. And the city, like, it's amazing what's not there. Because it tells us that the, the people of the city, they kind of look over and they stir and they go, who's that? And they get the response, Jesus! And, and 
there is no response by the people of the city. It's like, oh, okay. And it kind of rolls back over. It's just this great moment, right? There's just no response to the people of the city make. And I think it's important to take a moment to understand, like, if you're in the city, what's your experience of Palm Sunday? Like, okay, so let's think about that for a minute. Going back to our Super Bowl analogy, if you live down by Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, and you know the Super Bowl is coming, and it's going to be played in Arrowhead Stadium, like you have all, you know, all these, these millions, thousands, I don't even know how many people are going to go, like you just know that it's just going to be really busy for the next week. Like, how excited are you? Are you really excited if, you're, if you live right, like right, next to the, right next to the stadium? Or, or are you just kind of frustrated that every piece of meat that you could possibly grill has been bought up and that you're not going to be able to get to work on time because traffic's going to be crazy? And, and like, you'll probably put on your, your jersey for the big game day, but like for the most part, you just want everyone to kind of go home. Like, it's a big game, but like, watch it on TV maybe. Just, just get out of my way. I got my life to live, right? That's probably where the people of Jerusalem are at on this. Like, if you, if you look at how many towns had to send people to Jerusalem for the Passover, it would have been the better part of a month to be able to get everyone in, sacrifice, celebrate Passover, go home, and like have everyone, all these towns come in. So like two to three weeks of like people coming in and leaving, and coming in and leaving, and coming in and leaving, and as all of these different communities are rolling in, they're all excited, and you just want to get through your work day. Like, you're not, like, you'll celebrate Passover, it'll be good, but like, whoo, like, all these folks, I just want to get back to regular, regular life. And, and I can see, like, the, the people of the city being especially fried at the people coming in from Galilee with, with Jesus, because, like, they're looking over and like, man, you, you tore down all those palm leaves? Like, that's our shade. You tore down the, the tree, for the palm tr from the palm trees, like, we stand under? Like, that, that's where we got our shade. I'm, I'm going to be hot tomorrow because of you. And, and where are your cloaks? Pick your cloaks off the ground. You're not, that's not decent. Put your cloaks back on. Like, what? settle down. It's a Passover, but still, like, chill. Like, set, set, settle down. And, like, it's just this, a marked tr 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 contrast between the people of the city who've had a, or the people of the country uh, of Galilee have had a whole week to, to get excited with and for Jesus, and the people of the city who just, like, eh. Who's that? Right? And, and so the people of the city, like the people of the country, they, they, they're, they're coming at this from different places. And then a week later, on Good Friday, we, there's another crowd that, that we'll talk about more when we get there. But like there's the crowd that gather at Good Friday and they're ready to uh, ch chant for Jesus to be crucified. And we got to be clear, that's like a completely different group of people because if you think about what it's like when a big old group of people roll into the city and you've been traveling together and you roll into the city, like, is it, well, y'all got to find your own hotels. You got to find your places to stay. People like scatter. And, and by the time Good Friday rolls around at the end of the week, all those Jews from Galilee, some of them might have already started heading home. Like the, the crowd that is excited to bring Jesus into the city is a very different crowd than the crowd that respond, that in the city that looks at Jesus and the people of Galilee showing up and goes, who's that? And that's a very different crowd again from the people at the end of the week who are going to be chanting crucify him. It's not like people go schizophrenic and start changing their mind drastically. It's just a really big city and all the country folks sort of meld into the city and, and yeah, it's complicated, it's messy. And, uh, that might be the most accurate thing I could say about Palm Sunday. It's a mess. It's messy, right? It's a mess because everyone involved has different expectations, different plans, different, a different sense of how things are going to unfold, and, and none of them really work out, right? The group that was traveling with Jesus, they're traveling with Jesus, and yay, son of David, going to the city of David, he's going to do something big, and they're right but they don't have any clue about what that's gonna look like because they're thinking son of David and David was known as a great warrior and, and that's not what Jesus is going to do, right? And then there's the expectations of the people in the city and they, they expect Jesus to just 
go home so we can get back to our life in the city. And that's not what happens either. All right. There's the disciples who have their own expectations, but they're obviously way off because on the way up in uh, Matthew 20, we have them arguing about who is the greatest, who's going to be uh, sitting at the seat of honor in the future, not quite understanding that uh, their expectations of what will bring honor is, is not quite how it's going to unfold. And, and then there's what Jesus is expecting. And frankly, I just, I don't even know how to begin to try to figure that out. What we do know, besides the fact that it was a mess, is that Jesus doesn't look at the people cheering and tell them, you're cheering for the wrong thing, go away. Right? Jesus doesn't do that. Right? What Jesus doesn't do is he doesn't look at the people of the city and lash out in anger because they're not getting excited for him. What Jesus doesn't do is send the disciples home because they haven't figured it out yet. What Jesus doesn't do here matters a lot because Jesus keeps on bringing people along with him. Some of them understand more, some of them understand less, none of them, none of them understand everything. It's, it's a bit of a mess, but at the end of the day, Jesus keeps on doing what matters most. He's, he's heading towards Easter. He's heading towards uh, the, the cross and, and the forgiveness that's gonna happen there. He's heading towards what matters most. And that's what I'm holding on to on this Palm Sunday that in the swirl of expectations called life today, we have expectations about a whole bunch of things. And uh, I gotta tell you that I don't have a clue which of my expectations about the future of the church, the future of the community, the future of the nation, the future of my family, heck, the future of my children. Like I have expectations. I don't know which of them will come true. I don't know which one of them, which of them will be fulfilled. I don't know what's going to happen. It's kind of a mess. Start talking about what's going to happen in the future right now. Right now of all times, trying to figure out what a good expectation is just seems like an act of futility, truth be told. But what I can be sure of is that I'm going to keep on following Jesus. And that as we keep on following Jesus and being excited about that, uh, that we keep on following him through a path towards Easter with an expectation that we can hold on to that Jesus will continue to be Lord and that in the end things will work out not because of anything we do or our expectations but because of what Jesus did and Jesus will do. It's kind of an odd punchline to have but that's kind of the nature of Palm Sunday. It's a mess, a lot of expectations, but we keep on following Jesus. That's, that's what we got. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we begin this holiest of weeks, guide us through these days from the Last Supper that might nourish us before the tragedy of Good Friday as we come to the shocked silence of Saturday and head towards Easter. As expectations swirled around you then, on the first Palm Sunday, help us to temper our expectations and simply focus on you, on following you, knowing that you lead us towards what we need most, both in this life and in the life to come. I hope your Holy Week goes well. I hope you were able to uh, worship on not just Easter, but also uh, join in with the church family on Thursday and Friday, which is how we get from here to Easter. The path to Easter goes through the Last Supper and the crucifixion. So I think it's important for us to stop together and mark those times, those moments together. So I hope that you have a holy week and may the peace of Christ be with you this day and always. Amen.